Well, all right, my friends, my subscribers, how we get started with little uh, grams of complete fairy tales as we do. But first, I want to do a little preamble here. I've been having me some issues with the little Windows update and my little uh, Streamlabs OBS. I've been dropping frames about the five minute mark and uh, it caused me no amount of consternation, I must tell you. So if you see me start to get all uh, jittery, well, that be why. But you know what? We are going to press on because it does not seem to be affecting the audio. And you can just close your eyes and let me uh, lull you to sleep or into a sense of complete relaxation. Who's to say, I don't know, but I just wanted to preload it in that because you forgot to get your Grimm's Complete Fair Tales. I do not care. It must be happening. So let's set the mood now that that has been established there. Let me get a little white light going on there. Take that off there. cross-eyed cat for you there or oh, my rendition of it probably butchered just a bit but i'm a bit surprised myself i got as much of it as i did anyhow hey let's dive in shall we shall we yeah i've been talking too much about things you probably don't care about but hey this is a low rent operation here so when you get down into the bargain basement that's what you get so let's dive in with the hair and all the hedgehog that's right this story, my dear young folks, seems to be false, but it really is true for my grandfather when relating it always used to say, quote unquote, it must be true, my son, or else no one could tell it to you. Hmm. The story is as follows. One Sunday morning, about harvest time, just as the buckwheat was in bloom, the sun was shining brightly in heaven. The east wind was blowing warmly over the stubble fields. The larks were singing in the air, the bees buzzing among the buckwheat. The people were all going in their Sunday clothes to church, and all the creatures were happy, and the hedgehog was happy too. The hedgehog, however, was standing by his door with his arms akimbo, enjoying the morning breezes and slowly trilling a little song to himself, which was neither better nor worse than the songs which hedgehogs are in habit of singing on a blessed Sunday morning. While he was thus singing half aloud himself, it suddenly occurred to him that while his wife was washing and drying the children, he might very well take a walk into the field and see how his turnips was going on. The turnips were, in fact, close to beside his house, and he and his family was accustomed to eating them, for which reason he looked upon them as his own. No sooner said than done, the hedgehog shut the door behind him and took the path to field. He had not gone very far from his home and was just turned around the slow bush which stands there outside the field to go up into the turnip field when he observed the hare who had gone out on business of the same kind, namely to visit his cabbages. When the hedgehog caught sight of the hare, he bade him a friendly good morning. But the hare who was in his own way a distinguished gentleman and frightfully haughty, did not return the hedgehog's greeting, but said to him, assuming at the same time a very contemptuous manner, quote unquote, how do you happen to be running about in, here in the field so early in the morning? Well, I'm taking a walk, said the hedgehog. A walk, said the hare with a smile. It seems to me that you might use your legs for a better purpose. This answer made the hedgehog furiously angry, for he can bear anything but an attack on his legs, just because they are crooked by nature. So the hedgehog said to the hare, You seem to imagine that you can do more with your legs than I with mine. 
That is just what I do think, said the hare. That can be put to the test, said Hedgehog. I'll wager that if we run a race, I will outstrip you. Well, that's ridiculous, you with your short legs, said the hare. But for my part, I am willing, if you have such a monstrous fancy for it, what shall we wager? A golden loose deer of bottle of brandy, said the hedgehog. Done, said the hare. Shake hands on it, and then it may as well come off at once. Nay, said the hedgehog. There is no such great hurry. I am still fasting. I will go home first and have a little breakfast. In half an hour, I will be back again at this place. Hereupon, the hedgehog departed. And for the hare was quite satisfied with this. And on his way, the hedgehog thought to himself, The hare relies on his long legs, but I will contrive to get the better of him. He may be a great man, but he is a very silly fellow, and he shall pay for what he has said. So when the hedgehog reached home, he said to his wife, Wife, dress yourself quickly. You must go out to the field with me. Oh, what's going on then, said his wife. I've made a wager with the hare for a golden loose dior and a bottle of brandy. I'm to run a race with him, and you must be present. Oh, good heavens, husband, the wife cried. Are you out your mind? Have you completely lost your wits? What can you make? <laughs> what can make you want to race with the hare? Hold your tongue, woman, said the hedgehog. That is my affair. And don't begin to discuss things which are matters for men. Be off, dress, and come with me. What could the hedgehog's wife do? <laughs> she was forced to obey him whether she liked it or not. So when they had set out for, the, for their place together, the hedgehog said to his wife, Now pay attention to what I'm going to say. Look, you, I will make the long field our race course. The hare shall run in one furrow, and I in another, and we will begin to run from the top. Now all that you have to do is place yourself here below the furrow, and when the hare arrives at the end of the furrow on the other side of you, you must cry out to him, I am here already. And they reached the field, and the hedgehog showed his wife her place, and then walked up the field. When they reached the top, the hare was already there. Shall we start? said the hare. Certainly, said the hedgehog. Then both at once, so saying, each placed himself in his own furrow. And the hare counted once, twice, thrice, and away and went off in a whirlwind down the field. The hedgehog, however, only ran about three paces, and then he stooped down in the furrow and stayed quiet where he was. When the hare therefore arrived in full career at the lower end of the field, the hedgehog's wife met him with a cry. I'm here already. The hare was shocked and wondered not a little. He thought it was the hedgehog himself who was calling to him, for the hedgehog's wife looked just like a husband. The hare, however, thought to himself, that has not been done fairly, and cried, it must be run again, let us have it again. Once more, he went off like the wind in a storm, so that he seemed to fly. But the hedgehog's wife stayed quietly in her place. So when the hare reached the top of the field, the hedgehog cried himself out, I'm here already. And the hare, however, quite beside himself with anger, cried, It must be run again. We must have it again. All right, answered the hedgehog. For my part, we'll run it as often as you choose. So the hare ran 73 times more. And the hedgehog always held out against him. And every time the hare reached either the top or the bottom, either the hedgehog or his wife said, I'm already here. At the 74th time, however, the hare could no longer reach the end. In the middle of the field, he fell to the ground. 
the blood streamed from his mouth, and he lay dead on the spot. But the hedgehog took the lure de oil which he had won and a bottle of brandy, called his wife out of the furrow, and both went home together in great delight. And if they are not dead, they are living there still. This is how it happened that the hedgehog made the hare run races with him on the Bruxter Hill Heath till he died. And since that time, no hare has ever had any fancy for running races with a Brutahood hedgehog. More of this story, however, is, firstly, that no one, however great he may be, should permit himself to jest at anyone beneath him, even if he be only a hedgehog. And secondly, it teaches that when a man marries, he should take a wife in his own position, who looks just as he himself looks. So whosoever is a hedgehog, let him see to it that his wife is a hedgehog also, and so forth. And that has been the hare and the hedgehog. Hopefully that frame rate didn't drop out on you. <laughs> Messed that all kinds of up, did I not? Well, hey. Once again, this has been Grimm's Complete Fair Tales. That's been a little uh, cross-eyed cat. And hey, I got a affiliate link for this bad boy down in the description there. Give it a click if you want to copy your own. Or if you just want to support the channel, just shop through that for whatever you may like. And I greatly appreciate it. In any event, I hope you're doing well. Kisses to the missus and a tip of the hat to your cat. All right, you have a good one.